The college basketball experience final four media day recap edition on the sports gambling podcast network is brought to you by cut cut is a peer to peer social betting platform that's us based and available in 40 states head over to cut.com that's k-u-t-t.com and use that promo code sgpn for a 10 percent deposit today we're also brought to you by underdog fantasy play their pick them all season long over with 100 times in NBA, MLB, NHL, college hoops, and more. Sign up today using the promo code TCESGPN to get a 100% deposit match today. Welcome, everybody, to the College Basketball Experience, part of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Thursday night, April the 4th, we got less than 48 hours till the Final Fours. We're going to tip off those games. We had a hell of an NIT game. Hope you cashed out on them. Seton Hall Pirates rallying from seven down with three minutes left, five down with a minute 30. Terrific game for Gene Holloway to get it done, 79-77. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. There we go. Something the ad. I was looking at the box scores and all of a sudden the ad just started talking to me. Um, but yeah, it's great win for Shaheen Holloway and the Seton Hall Pirates to get it done. Win the NIT. We all agree that they should have been in the NCAA tournament. We thought Indiana state should have been in the NCAA tournament, but a great game, but Hey, we're talking final four here. We had media day. Dan Hurley and the Yukon Huskies did make it uh, safely to um, Phoenix, so they will be playing Saturday night. They they're getting the rest. I'm sure they they got their they got their practice time. Maybe went a little bit less, a uh, little bit later in the day. But uh, yeah, the, the games are going to tip off here. In less than 48 hours. We got some coaching news. We also got um, some more portal guys. Shockingly, even though it is a dead period, but hey. I'm not alone here tonight over on the College Basketball Experience. Joining me, you guys know him from the chat. You guys also know him from the Pump Fake Pod himself. His name is Michael Huffer. He is a college hoops junkie. Michael, welcome to the College Basketball Experience. Ryan, Matt, Moneyline Mac, thanks for having me. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, it's crazy we only got, what, three games left now since the NIT just wrapped up. So crazy indeed indeed and i'm glad that you said my name because i didn't even introduce you myself i am moneyline <laughs> mac kk former former video coordinator for bob huggins and frank martin and also known as it's another edition of mac tonight over at the college basketball experience thank you for reminding me to introduce myself let me al- allow me to introduce myself to myself or uh, whatever the <laughs> fucking quote is from Austin powers. But Hey man, um, I know we caught up in Vegas. Like you said, um, just thoughts on the tournament so far as we wind down to unfortunately three games left. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I just, I felt like we blinked and it was a uh, preseason tournaments, but no, uh, I thought this tournament would be chalk at the beginning. That was kind of a prediction I had. I did have some a few upsets as we talked about, but um, you know, I, I we're kind of seeing the chalk heavy, right? And everyone that was on UConn because they're a really good team, they're turning out that they're proving everybody they're good on both sides of the ball and that they're they're competitive. And so is Purdue of all places. Uh, and these Purdue fans in Indy, they're acting like Philadelphia fans. It's all or nothing. So it's a championship or bust for them. So two juggernauts making the final four. And you kind of have, I, I don't want to say two crazy underdogs. I mean, NC State for sure. But Alabama, a solid team that can run with UConn. So I do like this matchup. I did, I did not have NC State in my final four. I'll tell you that. Um, but it was a good Elite Eight. So uh, Houston let me down. I was I was heavy on Houston this year. Yeah, I well, I everybody knows I was heavy on Houston. They, I had them, I had them winning it. Um, th- them in Arizona meeting in the national championship. I think they would be playing on Saturday if uh, the best guard 
arguably in America was still playing, but it is what it is. Um, can't change it. Injuries are a part of the game. Luckily, Duke did fucking lose, so that at least was a plus. It wasn't one of those where Duke was going to back uh, backdoor their way into a Final Four because the best guard in that region went down with an ankle injury, and then they got to play two, three double-digit seeds. That loss is going to eat at Shire for, for a while. But uh, I don't know I don't know if you got to catch media day at all. Um, I know the coaches spoke, the players spoke, just – Anything stand out other than Hurley? Um, I don't even know how to describe Hurley. Hurley got four hours of sleep, everybody, in case you didn't hear it. And he'll let you know that he got four hours of sleep. Yeah, I, I did get to catch a little bit of highlights of Media Day. I mean, of course, the UConn story stood out. Uh, they flew, they, I, I saw that they flew Allegiant in. Uh, haven't flown that in a while. I did fly Spirit into Vegas when we went there, probably a similar airline. So I'm sure they were complaining about that. Um, and, and it's wild that Kevin Keats, you know, I was just thinking uh, his job was up in jeopardy about what, six, 90, 60 days ago, yes. 30 days ago, even or less. And now uh, now he now he's on top of the world and going to be extended uh, just with seeing him at media day. Like, wow, I just that's the love of college basketball. You're never out of it, even as an 11 seed or, or even out of it in your conference tournament. It's just win one and, and go. And. The story's there for NC State as well, uh, with Jimmy V and a similar run that they're having this year. So, but it, no, I, I it, that's one thought I just had with Kevin Keats for sure. Yeah, it's 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 absolutely wild. And by the way, everybody, I hope that you're watching the three point shootout. I got it on in the background. My man Tominaga's stroking it. Tominaga <laughs> just beat Boogie Ellis. I think that was the that was the first round. So they just started over there. Um, I think what this thing's going to go on for the next two hours. So hopefully Tom and Aga magic can get the three point competition. He will forever hold a uh, special place in my heart. When I, when I was labeled a racist, cause I called him Lynn sanity. Cause I forgot <laughs> his name when he first came on the scene last year. So shout out to Tom and Aga. Love what he did for that Nebraska program. And real quick, before we talk about some more college hoops, you're listening to the College Experience on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, home to 20 plus gambling. All free, or all shows are free. All 20 plus. This week's featured show is MLB Gambling Podcast. Uh, baseball is back, and so is MLB Crew with their picks. MLB's been pissing me off lately. So uh, get on over there to get over to the MLB Gambling Podcast. And if you subscribe, well, I mean, what are what else are you waiting for? Help those guys out, and, you know, they might throw you a bone, throw you a lock dog, a winner. So get on over there to the MLB Gambling Podcast. Yes, shout out to the chat, Ellie Shu, Tiger, Trevor, co-host of the Pump Fake Pod. Go check it out with Michael and CBB Nick, who we've had on the show as well. David, talking about Tamanaga Sanity, Tamanaga Magic. Uh, Matthew Austin, shout out to him. He likes to chalk with UConn and Purdue. God, I hope that doesn't happen, but it may. Uh, Bernard, everybody rolling along in the chat. Cannabis Capper. Um, I'm really loving this new new format on the college experience where we just talk college hoops year round now, baby. So, um, Michael, um, I, we got cut off. Nate Oates made a joke that he slept pretty well last night. Um, he did not have anything to do with um, the plane issues in, in stores, Connecticut. Are you buying this, or is this just a uh, wrong place, wrong time? Like you said last year with Brandon Miller for uh, the UConn Huskies last night. <laughs> I, I'm I, I'll buy into that, I, I guess. I mean, I, I think it's definitely a jab at Hurley, right? Uh, and I, I'm fine with it because Hurley takes shots, and you got to give out what you or take whatever, take what you give. out. I have no idea what I'm even saying there, but get you know, you got to be ready for what you give out, and I think that's what Hurley. Uh, has got to, you know, this is going to be a little little buzz with this game, I think, for sure, compared to the Purdue-NC State game on the first slate. Uh, already some shots taken, no pun intended for Alabama there. Um, but, yeah, just accomplices. So I'm excited for this one. I think if Alabama can come out strong offensively, shooting the three well, you know, they'll be right in this. But, I mean, their defense is porous. So it's NC State – or, um, excuse me, Alabama's, you know, all fronts. but. But no, I think Nate Oates is buying into it, and I think he, I think it's a realize, realization that UConn's the big rivalry, and they're the juggernaut, blue bloods of, of the 2000s. So, you know, I I think he's going all in and not afraid to 
to throw some gasoline on that fire. No doubt, no doubt. And they're good friends, well documented with DC Matthews playing for Nate Oates at high school, then going over to Rhode Island. Obviously, Nate Oates was an assistant at Buffalo for Bobby Hurley, who's now the head coach at Arizona State. So a lot of history with the Hurley and Nate Oates are arguably two of the most annoying coaches in college basketball, I'd <laughs> make the argument. Um, both very arrogant, but both really good coaches, and that's why they're in the Final Four. Um other than that, not many. Uh, I mean, people love DJ Burns. He's got the big bed. I know they're comparing bed sizes. We we compare everything. We micromanage or put everything under a microscope this time of year. Um, but I'll tell you what else is going to be under a microscope. And this was some big coaching news today, man. The must bus is headed out west to Los Angeles. We talked about this last night. Kind of hinted at that we thought this may happen. Uh, Eric Musselman makes the jump from... Arkansas, he goes over to USC as they head into the Big Ten. Musselman finishes Arkansas. He was there five years. He came in with that um, coaching class that had Nate Oates and himself. He finishes 111 and 59, 47 and 42, a little underwhelming in actual SEC play, but he will be most known for his taking off his shirt because they went to back to back Elite Eights and a Sweet 16 where they upset. Uh, Kansas, they upset Gonzaga a couple years ago. Thoughts on the fit with Muss, whose wife is from the area, um, out west in LA? Yeah, I, I you can't hate the Muss bus going anywhere. I, uh, you know, I, I take them anywhere. And, and USC now with a, with a new look next year, uh, across all boards, uh, joining a new conference. So it'll, it'll be interesting seeing, seeing Muss in, in the new, new area. Uh, and, and maybe even seeing some Arkansas players like Khalif Battle following him to USC. I'm not sure on that. Uh, that's just speculation there. But uh, we already had one, must, the, the big kid, Cohen, from UMass oh, to yeah. Arkansas. Now he says he's going to USC. So I think you're on to something. I think that's most likely going to happen. Yeah, I would love to see Khalif Battle in USC. And, you know, you saw some transfers out even for USC now. So and going – just across the road there um, in Los Angeles. But yeah, I, yeah, I, you can't be mad about must bus uh, signing up. And I, and I like the move, especially just with uh, it's just a fresh conference. It's a fresh, fresh face and a, and a solid coach. that's proven that he can, you know, make a run in March. Uh, they had a weak team this year. It was tough watching them play basketball as much as I maybe would bet on them as a money line underdog or, or heavy spread. Uh, they ended up covering kind of at the end there in the season, but um, no, Musselman will have those guys running, maybe take a year as they start gelling with, with portal players, but um, you know, he'll have those guys cooking. And I expect USC to be maybe a TMZ be kind of dangerous this year. So, yeah. I do. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, well, why, what happened there? Because I mean, they were coming off back to back elite eight and a sweet 16 they probably they overachieved in probably two out of the three. I think the one year they were actually elite eight good. Um, the other two years, I thought they just pulled magical upsets, which is part of the tournament we're seeing with NC State right now. I'm looking at it right now. Arkansas was the longest time uh, Musselman had been in one place. Before that, it was Nevada for four years. Other than that, he had not been anywhere more than two years, other than when he played college basketball at uh, San Diego. So. I think that kind of speaks to, you know, this isn't a jab at Musselman, but he's demanding. He's a strong personality. He doesn't really give a damn what you think of him. Um, I think he needed a fresh start. And, and I know it's crazy saying that he went to a two elite eights and a sweet 16. I don't know. what Do, do you agree with that assessment with, with Musselman potentially just being a guy that's always got to move after three, four years just because of his, Strong, he's got an ego. Let's call it. Let's call it spade a spade. He's got an ego. He's got a strong personality. That's what makes him great. He's an. He's got an ego for sure. Uh, you got to a little bit as a coach, I think. Sometimes you know, you know, playing sports, but uh, he he's a sixty year old millennial. He's he's got a few LinkedIn changes. You know, his resume. He gets tired after a few years. I definitely agree with that. Uh, if I would have thought he would have went out to Los Angeles and Southern California. I did not expect that good call on his wife being from that area. Um, so yeah, fresh, fresh start. He'll, he'll be somewhere else in, in four to five years, but Hey, maybe he'll make a run with the Trojans. Um, they I, can need see, it I, can, 
program. I could see him going to the NBA um, to finish out his career because that's where his old man finished out. Um, maybe if he calms down a little bit. And, like, his wife is a strong – she has a strong personality too. So, Septa tells me she runs the house and – she, that this is an easy call to a uh, happy wife, happy life out in LA. And I mean, for, for them being from there, it's probably an easy decision living in LA versus Fayetteville. I personally would like to live in Fayetteville versus fucking LA, but <laughs> with, 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 sometimes you got to make your fucking wife happy. Um, so that, that opens up a good job, a really good sec job, a fucking passionate fan base. They had been dead before Musk got there. Mike Anderson kind of always underachieved. Um, Pelfrey was underwhelming. We know about um, the f- craziest 40 minutes in, in the 90s with Nolan Richardson. Who do you think uh, gets that job? I tweeted out, I think Chris Beard would be the perfect fit. That fan base reminds me of Texas Tech with their loyalty. And I thought Beard, I know he went to Texas. That's his alma mater. But I thought... Texas Tech fit Chris Beard perfectly, and he's coached at Little Rock. Do you have another name, or do you like the Beard angle? What's your thoughts on that Arkansas job? Yeah, I, I like the Beard angle. Uh, you know, I, I'm kind of looking like com- side by side and compare like the coaches that have already had a job, and I, I expect Josh Shirts from Indiana State. I think he isn't he going to St. Louis. Those are the rumors I, I hear. Um, yeah, so I. There's not many places open, you know, open right now for for, for coaches. But um, I like the Chris Beard angle. It'd be a crazy move to go from Ole Miss to, to Arkansas. Um, but you know, I I, I don't I, I personally don't have an opinion on it because it just kind of happened. I was just going side by side. Like I, I don't even know <laughs> the, the coaches yeah. that are open and left. It's kind of I mean for Arkansas, I think. But they'll they should find somebody. Um, I just had my stuff open. I mean, another name, uh, uh, Mike, is, is Will Wade. I mean, people love Will Wade. I mean, he coached in the SEC at LSU. But I don't know. There, there's something about Beard's personality. I think he fits Wu Pig Suey. I, I think that fan base would fucking adore him, fucking love him. He'd be a perfect fit, grit, grind, toughness. He, he fits what they what they are in, in, in Fayetteville, in my opinion. Will Will Wade would be, I think, perfect, uh, even better than Chris Beard. I mean, maybe not better, but I don't want to say, but just more realistic, it sounds like. Uh, What Wade did with McNeese State, just bottom seller team, and what he was at LSU with all that drama, it would be fun seeing him back in the SEC. So I'd be rooting for that one, too. I I think of that just because uh, it was out there. My personal personal hope is, is Beard goes to Arkansas, and then um, Wade goes to uh, Ole Miss. Oh my god! Just a complete yeah. like wife swap, almost yeah. like a coach yeah. swap. <laughs> I, I, I hope I hope that's the dominant. So we get both of them in the SEC. Um, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be fascinating. I mean, this kind of is the final big big job that is open. So we we shall see how the dominoes fall. Um, but hey, man, this this is this time of year. The coaching carousel, the final four, all those coaches are there together in uh, Phoenix right now. Let me hit an ad real quick, Mike, before we dive into some of the portal names and then get your thoughts on the official picks for these games. Uh, Over on the college basketball experience, we're brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's U.S.-based and available in 40 states. P2P social betting, new and better than ever. Get on over there with features to get the social betting network. Cut offers everything. And you can go head-to-head, group chats, betting leaderboards, head-to-head history, profiles. Uh, get cash back on every um, bet that you make. I uh, hope you got on over there to Cut and battled Sean Sack in the money green and tailed my seat and hall pick. He liked the Sycamores, but we came out on top. So get on over there, cut.com. Um, in the app store or visit uh, KUTT.com promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit today. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play alongside your favorite players and um, programs all season long over at Underdog Fantasy. We hit on our underdog play tonight with Kadari Richard higher and my man Avila lower. Uh, so Underdog, they've been great to us all year. Um, giving out winners left and right. We are going to give out our official underdog for the 
um, final four picks. So make sure you follow us on social media. Um, Colby, Noah, myself will give out the final um, underdog play. And what you can do, you can stack higher or lower um, with two or three different plays and get six to one, seven to one odds. Underdog has been unbelievable to us all season long with pick them in different contests. Um, and, and all you got to do is go over with the promo code at the top on youtube.com right now, T C E S G P N. And they will match your deposit um, uh, up to $100. So instantly. And if you uh, are 18 or older, present in the state where underdog fantasy operates, terms apply, concern with your play, call 1 800 522 47 or visit ncpgambling.org. All righty. We are back on the college basketball experience. So we talked some coaches. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk a little portal because um, the portal never, never, ever, ever sleeps. Um, <laughs> lighter day in the portal today. We we ran through a bunch in. Go check out our portal episode last night and the night before. We've done three portal episodes this week. Uh, Jameel Reynolds going from Cincinnati to USF. He is a Florida kid, so kind of going back home. PJ Haggerty. He is going to be a super sophomore next year, his third year. Um, he's going from Tulsa to Memphis, third program in as many years. Ben Burnham going from Charleston to Virginia Tech. Kobe Johnson, I don't have the gunshot sounds, going from fucking USC to UCLA. <laughs> that is disgusting going across the, the rivals. Now we got Mick Cronin versus the Must Bus twice a year in the Big Ten. What the fuck's going on? Uh, Michael, you're uh, your thoughts on some of the, the transfers today or just in general, who, who's some of which fits do you like? Do you like the Doug McDaniel one going over to Kansas state to be the next little guard? Do you like Tucker DeVries? Do you like Zeke Mayo going to Kansas? Just thoughts on the portal so far with uh, other than it's fucking ridiculous. We're talking portal less than 48 hours to the final four. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we could have talked about it. What, two weeks ago, I guess you guys kind of hit hinted on it at some spots too, but yeah, I mean, just hop in the portal whenever you want to when season's over. Yeah, um, yeah when, when, whatever. It doesn't matter. DeVries, for you. <laughs> just, go ahead. Yeah, just – just it's like uh, John Belushi. It's like grab a beer. It don't cost nothing. Like well, do whatever yeah. you want. Like it doesn't yeah. matter. But yeah. now Zeke – I think Zeke Mayo is one of that really excited me. Um, with, with my old work, I actually had ties in South Dakota, so t- tons of Jackrabbit fans that I was associated with. Um, at my old job and and I kind of watched Zeke Mayo kind of blossom a little bit so it'll be interesting seeing him and his translate into the big 12 he's going to top program in there with Kansas so that's that's super exciting uh, and a huge drop huge jump and and DeVries to West Virginia I think it's a good move uh on all fronts absolutely uh you've seen what they've done at Drake and and West Virginia I mean to me is a storied program as a kid I mean growing up it's a They've always been in the hunt, and uh, I'd like to see them back to uh, where they were um, in the Final Four in Indianapolis. Saw like Devin Ebanks and all those guys um, back in the day. I'd love to see that team go back, and and DeVries is a solid fit, absolutely. Was weird with uh, Kobe Johnson with this one. Yeah, like you mentioned, just 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 walk across the street, go ahead and uh, and join UCLA, and then they just picked up Sky Clark for Louisville. I think that's a great fit. Uh, Mick Cronin is 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 not accepting what happened this year, and I think he's trying to build a solid roster. Um, pointing out on the ones kind of recently, uh, Jamil Reynolds, Cincy to USF, and going back to our coaches conversation, you know, looking at a couple things, Amir Abdurrahim would be a solid fit for Arkansas, maybe. But to me, with that transfer, it makes me think that he's staying at U- USF. And on on the contrary, Jerome Tang as well at Kansas State. Uh, with Doug McDaniel. I, I, I wouldn't leave if I had got Doug McDaniel. I mean, you don't have to worry about his grades, right? Uh, but definitely no. need to just, uh, you know, he's a solid player and that's, that's a great fit. And yeah, a little, little feel of, uh, of the magic that they had last year. So hope, hope, hopefully, uh, and, and Manhattan's always a tough place to play. So um, that's a solid landing spot. So those, those, those definitely are uh, a few of my favorites. Uh, you know, as a, as a Hoosier fan, they, they got to make some moves in the portal. It's pretty disgusting in my opinion. So hoping for the best, 
but I, I, I also want to point out that I feel like just every fan is like, oh, we're getting this guy in the portal, right? Uh, it's, it's just one yeah. of those things that you just have to say. Uh, oh, yeah, he's coming, he's coming to us. We're in like his final 12 or 11, and then you'll see like final an Instagram 17. or Twitter post. <laughs> yeah, final 15, like, all right, we're in there. <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, those, are, those are exciting. It's just it's going to keep getting – it's going to keep getting more exciting. Uh, another one's Michi Johnson to Ohio State, which was kind back of random. Back to Ohio State. It's back to Ohio State, which is my – I mean, I guess it shows – Diebler's a solid coach. I mean, th- those guys were kind of cooking at the end there and made a little run in the Big Ten with some solid wins over Purdue. Um, and then how can I forget Eddie Lampkin to Syracuse? That's a weird one to do as well. Uh, after, their, after their little couple wins and – or what, one win in, in, in March Madness. But – Um, No, I I think it's also telling of where the coaches are going or if they're staying. If they're building the roster, they better not – they're not going to pull a Bobby Petrino and dip out, leave a note or something. So I I, I, I agree with basically everything you you touched on. And uh, your co-host over at the Pump Fake Pod um, is making a good point about John L. Davis. We saw Vlad go in the – in the portal as well. You you would think that the FAU guys are going to go to Michigan, just like Abdur Rahim's guys came with him from Kennesaw to South Florida, just like Danny Sprinkle's guys went with him from Montana State to Utah State. Now Grand Osobar is back in the portal, probably headed to Washington. Um, it, it Or Tucker DeVries going from Drake to West Virginia. It's I, I know his dad's a coach, so that's kind of a obvious one, but – it really is unique in terms of like guys get a better job and they're like, I mean, I won with these, these guys. Why wouldn't I bring them here to establish my culture, get, get my program off the ground. Why would I sell my soul to a guy that's quote unquote, got this many stars when I could just bring the guys that brought me to the dance, got me this five, six year deal where I'm going to be making four or $5 million a year, stay loyal to my dudes. And it's, it's worked. I, I think all the guys that have brought their guys with them have won at least in year number one, especially Abdur Rahim in South Florida. What do you think of that? I mean, we're going to see it with Musselman. I would assume he's going to bring his guys. Um, Pat Kelsey's trying to bring his guys from Charleston over to Louisville. Um, I was buy, buying Tim from JMU to Vandy. I know he couldn't get uh, Terrence Edwards, but he is at Vandy and um, kind of shows you how good Edwards was. But I mean, do you agree with that philosophy, bringing your guys that got you to the dance, got you the big paycheck? Absolutely. It, it, to me, it's just got feels of like the old travel basketball days of like building out a renegade team almost, and you just keep your guys and, and run wherever you want to. Uh, it, it's 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 definitely got that feel. And, and more power to the players, right? How many, uh, how many speeches growing up? Uh, that we give on college athletes getting paid and, and they finally have that. And I just can't imagine making that much money in college too. So follow the money and also follow the heart of the, uh, of, and, of the team and, uh, and, and you'll be golden and no pun intended there. Cause I do think Vlad golden and John L Davis end up going to Michigan. I mean, Davis is good enough to get a check in the NBA. Absolutely. Um, and I'm not just saying that because Stuart Lord Atlantic guy, but uh, he, he's, he's, he's a real deal. Except for that just terrible dribble out at the end there of uh, the Northwestern Trust. game. But you know what? Whatever. You, he makes that five, six out of ten times. So, um, no, yeah, yeah. I think I'm completely spot on with you, with with uh, what you're saying. And, yeah, I just think it feels like this is a bigger business now than what it even was. But it's not just the NCAA sticking it to the players constantly. So Let's go. Yeah, I, I – it's – Stay loyal to the guys that got you to the dance. I think that's an underrated element. And good for the play- The players from their side, it makes sense. It's like, I know what I'm getting with my coach. My coach trusts me. I can go make more money, play at a higher level, be on TV more in a bigger and better league. Why would I go somewhere else? <laughs> I mean, it, it makes sense for all parties. And shout out to Chad Damani. He is a Vanderbilt Commodore fan. He's fired up about the Mark Byington hire. The Deuce, obviously, Trevor, he's talking about his Badgers. Uh, yeah, no, Reynolds should go to uh, Wisconsin. But I forgot that you're an uh, Indiana fan, Michael. Um, on the other yep. side, I want, I'm going to ask you about the Purdue program because I know you love talking Boilermakers and Zach Eady. But before, well, 
we got to talk about Manscaped. And, and speaking of Manscaped, Zach Eady, I'm sure, gets on over there to Manscaped because it's spring cleaning time season. Your champions are made. And, you know, they got the new freaking lawnmower 5.0. Watch your confidence bloom with them springtime flowers. Zach Eady was bringing that freaking Manscaped razor in there while he's bringing that chick into that room. So get on over there, embrace the season, and join over 10 million men worldwide with Manscaped with an offer. And use that promo code SGPN, baby. Um, I love I love Manscaped. I, I, I've showed you my kit multiple times on this after being about fucking 10 JMOs in. I showed you off the LED lights, showed you off the uh, Beard Hedger Pro Kit, Handyman. Got a little bit of everything, and it's even waterproof if you fucking spill your beverage on your razor like I may have done one or two times in my day. Um, so get on over there. SGPN, and it's 20% off free shipping with that code SGPN at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code SGPN at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in the pants, getting ready for golf season or beach season, whatever floats your boat. All righty, we are back on the college basketball experience. Uh, shout out to the chat. Uh, all right, so let's talk, let's talk Purdue because you are an Indiana fan. Just your thoughts on Matt Painter, Zach Eady, the run that they've been on. I, I know I'm very critical of how they're officiated. Um, and, and honestly, nothing disgusts me more than the lecturing from the national media that if you criticize the way that they officiate Zach Eady, you hate Zach Eady automatically. I don't hate Zach Eady. I hate the way that they don't call fouls on him on both sides of the court because I think they're protecting him because they want him on the floor. It means it's you're putting your best product on the floor for the most amount of dollars. Um, well, I mean, what's your thoughts on, on Edie painter, Purdue officiating all the above. Yeah. Like, okay. So I went to ball state uh, and then, you know, I grew up an IU fan, you know, Bob Knight, you know, all that. My parents, oh, yeah. my dad went to IU. So, uh, I went to the final four and two. I, I saw them beat Duke. I was like six years old when I saw them beat Duke with Shane Batty and them. So I always grew up an IU fan, but you Jared know, Jeffries. yeah, Jared Jeffries, AJ Moy, that team was great. Uh, just a lot of Indiana guys on that team too, as well. So, you know, it's always been like flaunting something in the past, but then you have Purdue who's actually like make they've been good. They've made runs, but you know, they haven't, they've kind of been in sweet 16 elite eight territory. And then, we saw with Fairleigh Dickinson, you know, Arkansas Little Rock, St. Peter's. So um, these fans in Purdue, they're like I said, they're all or nothing right now. They're like Philly mode. Um, it, it's it's championship or bust. So once I went to Ball State, I'm still an IU fan, of course. My hatred of Purdue has gone down a little bit, but I still just can't. <laughs> I can't root for them, uh, and I and I can't stand Purdue uh, in general and the idea of them, but. A uh, lot of respect for Matt Painter. He's a great coach. He gets those guys buzzing. I would never, ever say to fire him, even after a terrible loss on Fairleigh Dickinson. Um, so, I, you know, I think this is probably their best team that they've ever – that they've had, even like uh, Jawan Johnson, Robbie Hummel team, Etwan Moore. You know, I think this is the best talented team, and Lance Jones was that missing piece for them. And you've seen Braden Smith improve drastically from freshman year as well. It gotten beefed up a little bit also. Um, and that's just been their, their gel and, and able to do that in and out game um, with Edie. But I completely agree with you. I think the refs are just like, okay, he's seven, four, this, he might be guarding a six, eight guy, six, nine guy. And he's in there right on the arms, right on the shoulders. And, you know, 24 free throws. I mean, going back to that one Northwestern game where it went to double overtime, I can't remember how many free throws Edie shot, but, yeah, it's it's excessive, and I and I don't think it's called fairly both ways. And I'd love to see it called both ways with media darling DJ Burns next uh, on here on Saturday. So, um, but I don't expect it to. And, and yeah, I just I'm with you, man. I I, I don't hate Zach Eady. I don't hate Matt Painter. Just hate the idea of Purdue. Um, but we'll be excited for a couple of my friends that are diehard Purdue fans. But. I want them to get as far as possible and lose because I'm, I'm <laughs> well, I have, I've said all week, the most Purdue thing of all time would be to lose to an 11 seed in the final four. So it would still be the history of losing to a double digit fucking seed 
it's only the second one they've played this tournament because Utah State was a nine. Yep. Gonzaga was a five and Tennessee was a two. It's been too chalky. Now all of a sudden it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. We can't have a double digit seed like uh, St. Pete in the Sweet 16. They've been short favorites too, right? Like, I mean, not Utah State by any means, but Gonzaga, Tennessee, now they're what, nine and a half favorites, eight and a half maybe. Uh, They're not the best at covering those spreads, uh, but they're just one run away from going on a 15 to 0 run just like that, which is scary about this Purdue team, which I think they'll match up well against UConn with uh, if if they were to to meet uh, on Saturday. So, Tre- 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 Oh, my God. He's got to – oh, man. Good luck, Trevor. I, Good luck. I, I will never, ever make Purdue my biggest bet in March ever, um, even if I thought they were going to be the right side. Um I think we're going to have a ball game on Saturday. I, I think NC State's actually going to have a shot to win. I think Alabama has a shot to win. I think I'm the only per- – really, I, I, feel, I feel like I'm in the minority that everybody's just circling. This is March Madness. This is the NCAA tournament. When you have a week off in between games and now we got some adversity with UConn and the flight shit, I know that's minor stuff, but it is a distraction. Um I, I think we're gonna have tight games in the football stadium, uh, and and I also felt like, man, I'm I'm bitter that I'm bitter that Tennessee did not get a crack at this because I wanted it for Barnes, but it sucks for them that they had to play Purdue because I feel like they were good enough to win it all with Dalton Connect. But I'm happy for Matt Painter, like you said, he's a he's a good basketball coach. Um, it, it, anybody that wanted him fired, they they need to. Get uh, check themselves into like a mental. Who game. else are you gonna get? Right. What the fuck yeah. are you talking about? You're fucking Purdue. Like fucking relax. Yeah. Um. He's done an unbelievable job building that program, and I am happy that he did break through. I just wish it had been on different terms rather than the way that game went down. But uh, all right. That's enough beating around the bush. I've given out my picks. I'm on the points in both games. I think both teams are live. I think we're gonna have a hell of a game or hell of games on Saturday night that people aren't expecting. Um, who you got? I mean, so we got UConn minus 11 and a half, 12 shop around Purdue minus nine, minus nine and a half who gets to Monday night and who cuts down the nets. Yeah. I, you know, this is one where I I'm, I'm confident and I don't mean to just, uh, you know, uh, grab your tail or anything, uh, money line Mac, but, uh, you know, I, I'm taking NC State with the points. I think Purdue gets the job done. We see the matchup that everyone, including CBS, wants to see. It's it's Purdue versus UConn. It's going to be a huge draw compared to, to last year, right? But still, so many people watched March Madness. It's it's the best tournament in sports. Um, but yeah, I think it's too many points for for NC State. They're the they're the darling team um that were were out of it based off of that three-point shot that took them into overtime i was stuck in an airport for it i'll never forget that now because they made this run like i said earlier similar to the to the jimmy v run and they got all the people behind them dj horny uh dj burns all those guys are are solid but nc state their defense has, has picked up a little bit uh in this tournament so maybe throw out all the stats from the regular season their defense is going to be a little porous. Um, they're going to have to be able to run on Purdue and, and, and play a little bit of a half-court game, too, and not let Purdue go on, on their run. Um, and, and, and and like we've talked about, Zach Eady, if he gets to the line 20 times, I'm worried about that number now because and then they just get the foul game going. And, and Zach Eady's a decent free throw shooter because you got to be when you go 15 to 20 times a game. Um, but – but no, I, I think they cover this uh, plus nine. The one I'm really undecided on, and I've gone back and forth, uh, is Alabama and UConn. I do lean Alabama there as well, but um, I, I, I'm looking at the stats from what UConn has held all these teams to. You know, I'm, I'm looking at that team total under for Alabama, and I'm also looking in the mirror, calling myself crazy because we see how fast Alabama runs, uh, and I think they will play competitive. But just I, why I can't fade is my thought on that. So fading I think I'm UConn. fading UConn. I think, it, it, I it's nerve wracking. I'll it's battle nerve-wracking. you on the UConn I'll, and uh, kind of with the angle on the team total under for Alabama, just because they've held te- what teams to like 50 points under 60 points uh, this tournament. 
and and even Marquette in the Big East championship uh, in the Big East tournament and just all this season. So uh, these these guys are the powerhouse juggernaut, and I trying to be counterculture picking against them uh, at the beginning of the tournament. But no, yeah, I think we're going UConn uh, with the team total under on Alabama. So, but go, go Wolfpack. Uh, crazy that they're, we're betting on them on April 6th, whatever. I know. I know. I know. I, I hate the ACC too. It, it's crazy. Who cuts down <laughs> the nets Monday, April the 8th in Phoenix? <sighs> think the dogs are barking and it's not the underdogs it's going to be it's going to be connecticut unfortunately i hate to say it uh, going back to back there's a little bit of, of history behind it um this 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 team is unbelievable and i can't stand them at all um but you know i will i will sprinkle a little bit of the money line on nc state to, to be the be, be there as well um on the plus nine and a half too as, as said but um, so expecting maybe UConn plays NC State, and if that's the case, you'd see a, another lopsided spread in the in the championship. Um, and, I, and a half. I, yeah, exactly. Like San Diego State was, what were they like twelve or thirteen? Um, and it, and it covered. Uh, they played for a good ten minutes in that in that in that game. So uh, yeah, I just I, it's tough for me to bet against UConn. I hate eating the chalk here. Uh, I hope everyone can make fun of me for that too as well, but. This is this is one of the best teams that I've I've seen in, in a long time, and they're proving it day in day out. Uh, but they're one bad shot, one one bad percentage away. Uh, but they did shoot like terrible against um, one of the games. This it was like Sweet Sixteen, or and they still won by like twelve or twenty. So uh, Illinois, mean, they, they they couldn't make a shot against Illinois, but Illinois just kept driving it into Klingon, and that did not work. <laughs> um. I don't mean to, I don't mean to get personal. I we I got beers and food with my family. We we're watching outside on this big screen. It was 28 23. We walked back to my apartment. It was 53 to 23. Like 50 51 to 23. I was like, oh my goodness, what yeah. happened? So yeah, that, that that's my UConn take. <laughs> I think that's the last impre- uh, last thought everybody has of UConn going on that 30 to 0 run. I, I just I was speechless at Illinois was as stubborn as they were. I mean, I liked, I, I don't disagree with driving the ball at Klingon, but you could shot fake or pass fake. I mean, shot fake and then kick it out. You, I'm not saying you don't have to drive it at him, but like trying to shoot every layup over him, it, that that clearly was not going to work. But um, Illinois, uh, we kind of thought was counterfeit. We'll talk about it. Um, UConn, Alabama, Saturday night. NC State, Purdue, Saturday night, winter, Monday night. Um, Michael has UConn cutting down the nets. Um, I don't think I've given out. Maybe I'll give out my final prediction um, tomorrow night. So, um, Michael, appreciate you hopping on the college basketball experience. Uh, this was fun. We're definitely going to have you back. I mean, we're like, like I keep saying every episode, we ain't going anywhere just because the season's over. I know we can't pick a hundred fucking games like every Saturday, but we can talk about transfers. We can talk coaches. We can talk about teams that are going to be undervalued come November, um, and so that we can we can hit we can hit the road running when we get to November uh, with these previews, with these futures, or some dogs that we're going to like and to back in these buy games. Um, Michael, uh, go check out his great work over at the Pump Fake Pod as well. Like I said, Trevor's in the chat. They do great. They do a great job over there. CBB Nick, we've had him on the show. He's been in the chat before. And, and go check out all the other channels over at the Sports Gambling Podcast. We talked about the MLB earlier. Up next is uh, the college baseball experience with Noah Beenick. So make sure you tune in. Uh, Omaha is right around the corner as well. Noah Beenick will have you uh, filled in on who, who to take this weekend with the series. He goes live every Thursday night, I believe. Uh, go check out the main sports gambling podcast network with Colby and those guys, Ryan and Sean, they're talking UFL, uh, college football experience. They're breaking down the schedules already. Fucking labor day. will be here before you know it. And we'll be talking college football week in and week out. And of course the college basketball experience, get on over there, subscribe, like leave a comment, all that good shit. It, it really helps out the network. Michael, you got anything, uh, before we get up on out of here, man? Now, uh, thanks for having me, Ryan. It was it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, 
yeah, wish we were picking 130 games or something and recapping yeah. a few as well, but uh, I won't know what to do with myself uh, for those for those months, but we'll be talking portals and, and whatnot. But yeah, uh, if everyone wants to check out where the Pump Fake Pod, uh, we, we love talking sports as well, especially college basketball. We're focused on college basketball and we'll have some offseason stuff. But uh, other than that, yeah, Ryan, thanks, thanks again. And it's been a fun year uh, in the chat and uh, – just building a little community here as well. I uh, got to meet some in the chat. So it's been, it's been a great year. Indeed it has, everybody. So we will see you guys later. This is the college basketball experience. You better start thinking about yours. And we are out of here.